Now, of course, to this absolutely wonderful evening. There may be no hierarchies in art. There are no hierarchies in art. But if there is an artist more radical than others, it is always the poet. Because the poet exists at the frontiers of language. He exists at the limit of thought. And he is always at his heart, no matter what the landscape of his concerns, the true poet is always a revolutionary. In a 1959 Nobel lecture, the Italian uh, poet Salvatore Quasimodo said, the politician wants men to know how to die courageously. The poet wants them to know how to live courageously. There is, there is no greater exemplar of that on the Indian firmament than Kefi Azmi. There was no greater <laughs> exemplar of that. And in his centenary year, a, a, a year in which we also need that reminder more than we have ever needed it before. There is no greater time to talk of the poet as dissenter, to talk of the poet as resistance, to talk of what poetry can do than Kefi Azmi. We of course know him as a revered Urdu poet. We know him as the Hindi movie lyricist who brought high literature to cinema. We know him as the screenwriter of seminal films like Garam Hawa, um, of dialogues of films like Manthan, 240 f uh, songs in 80 films we owe to him, and it, every one of them deserves mention, but I cannot not mention Kar Chale Hum Fida Janutan Saathiyon. I cannot not mention Vakt Ne Kiya Kya Haseen Sitam. I cannot not mention uh, Chalte Chalte Yuhi Koi Mil Gaya Tha. But it is not just Kefi as the lyrical giant he was. It was him as the poet who mirrored virtually the concerns of the Indian Republic as it was coming into existence, because he was concerned and passionately engaged with the ideas of identity, gender, caste. He introduced to us a whole new socially conscious form of poetry, pushing us into the concerns that don't necessarily come easiest to the most elite, the most literate of, of our society. There are people here tonight just way better equipped to talk about that, so I will lead you right into that. But it is our privilege tonight to host the first, or if not the first, definitely the most riveting full-length documentary made on Kefi, uh, Kefi Azmi's life by noted filmmaker Sumantra Ghoshal, Kefi Nama. That film will be screened here, which is a privilege for us to host, but we equally have the privilege to have both Sumantra and Shaban Azmi in the house. Now, Sumantra, of course, he started out uh, making advertising films, but his heart was clearly in art, because in the last few years, he's made a film on Zakir Hussain, he's worked on a film on uh, Bharatanatyam dancer Malvika Sarukai, and with this full-length feature film, he has also translated some of Kefi Saab's poems. Shabana Azmi, it is often hardest to introduce those who need no introduction, and Shabana Azmi, in her own persona as one of the seminal actresses, one of the progressives of Indian cinema, needs no introduction. But tonight, it is a privilege to be additionally able to introduce her as the custodian of that legacy of Kefi Azmi, as his daughter, and as somebody who, in her own work, has represented exactly what her father stood for. The flow of this evening is something like this. I'm going to invite the two of them up and Shabanaji to talk a bit about Kefi Saab. We'll then go directly into the film and we will have a 20, 25 minute um, audience engagement with them after. We decided that this is a conversation all of you will want to have. So if you have questions during the film, please hold on to them. We'll have the Q&A after. Right at the end, of course, the bar will open and we hope that the poetry and the conversations will continue long into the night. For the moment, it's my privilege to invite on stage Shabana Azmi and Shubhantra Ghoshal. Good evening, friends. It's wonderful to be back again at an event by Algebra, this time all the more meaningful because it is about Kefi Sahab and it is uh, in the year of his birth centenary. Shamontro has made a very beautiful film which you will watch. But uh, Payal gave us such a wonderful introduction that I don't think I need to say too much about Kefi Sahab because the points that I wanted to say, she's already said. And of course the film will tell you who he is. But I do feel that in celebrating Kefi, we celebrate a worldview. We celebrate a thought. We celebrate justice, equality, and most of all, giving a world of hope in these dark times. And so it becomes very important that we visit, revisit, 
and see, my God, these were people who are responsible for whatever we have today. And so we must not lose it under any circumstances. Please, Shumantro, Betho. Uh, <clears throat> we thought perhaps uh, that uh, it might be an idea, if you like, that I would recite the original poem. We'll choose a couple of poems, uh, three romantic poems and three of his more activist poems. The nice thing about Kefi was that he was both a romantic and a revolutionary. And uh, he, that you will see in this selection that has been done by Shimontru. He's very kindly uh, translated the poems, which is quite a daunting task. Uh, because somebody once famously said that translating a poem is like pouring perfume from one bottle into another. Some of the fragrance is bound to be lost. But let me tell you, with Shimantra's work, you will not feel that. You will find the essence of it. And I think because he's modest and he will not tell you that what is nice about his translation is that it doesn't stop at a translation. It also is a poem in its own right, because Shumantra is also a poet. So the order here is a little different from the order I would have chosen, but you know good actors listen to directors, and so his wish is my command. So if you disagree with that, please know where to do it. Shumantra, if you tell me why you have Pashimani as the first poem, it might be good. Okay, this has been sprung on the director, but I'll try. Pashimani is to do with first love. It's to do with, uh, it's regret, but it's not really regret. It's what happens to all of us as we are growing up and we fall in love and something happens and we don't fall quite out of it, but it doesn't work or it didn't work. And that is what happened to Kaifi as well, which is why I thought that a, that a poem like Pashimani would speak to everybody, some of you need to go back a bit, and some of you don't need to go back at all, perhaps. So it's a universal poem in that sense, and it also starts a journey in the three love poems, which we'll talk about as we read the other two. So I think that's why, that's why Pashimani. Uh, this was also used as a song in Chetananda's Hakikat, which some of you might know. मैं ये सोच कर उसके दर से उठा था कि वो रोक लेगी मना लेगी मुझको हवाओं में लहराता आता था दामन कि दामन पकड़ कर बिठा लेगी मुझको कदम ऐसे अंदाज से उठ रहे थे कि आवाज देकर बुला लेगी मुझको मगर उसने रोका न मुझको मनाया न दामन ही पकड़ा न मुझको बिठाया न आवाज ही दी न वापस बुलाया मैं आहिस्ता आहिस्ता बढ़ता ही आया यहाँ तक कि उससे जुदा हो गया मैं थैंक यू I got up to leave thinking this she would stop me she would call me back a gust of wind billowed my clothes. Ah, I thought all the better for her to hold on to them. My steps were hesitant, uncertain. She would call me back, surely. Truth is, she neither stopped me nor coaxed me to stay. She did not clutch at me nor asked me to linger. She said nothing, didn't call me back. And I walked slowly on walked so far that we are separate now. Ek Bosa. You know, the nice thing about Kefi is even when Kefi has a personal experience to relate, by the end of the poem, he makes it universal. The problem never remains his alone, even in a romantic poem. And so you'll find it in this गजल ऑल्सो जब भी चूम लेता हूँ इन हसीन आँखों को सौ चराग अंधेरे में झिलमिलाने लगते हैं फूल क्या शगूफे क्या चाँद क्या सितारे क्या 
سب رقیب قدموں پر سر جھکانے لگتے ہیں رقص کرنے لگتی ہیں مورتیں یا جنتا کی مدتوں کے لب بستہ غار گانے لگتے ہیں پھول کھلنے لگتے ہیں اجڑے اجڑے گلچن میں پیاسی پیاسی دھرتی پر عبر چھانے لگتے ہیں اور اب ملاحظہ فرمائیے لمحے بھر کو یہ دنیا ظلم چھوڑ دیتی ہے لمحے بھر کو یہ دنیا ظلم چھوڑ دیتی ہے لمحے بھر کو سب پتھر مسکرانے لگتے ہیں جب بھی چوم لیتا ہوں ان حسین آنکھوں کو سو چراغ اندھیرے میں جھل ملانے لگتے ہیں Whenever I kiss these lovely eyes, a hundred lamps light up in the dark. Be it a flower or a bud, the moon or the stars, my rivals all concede defeat. Time-stilled statues break out in dance, ancient caves long silent sing their songs. Desolate gardens bloom once more, clouds make peace with arid earth. For a moment, The world gives up all cruelty. For a moment, hard stones crease into soft smiles. Whenever I kiss these lovely eyes, a hundred lamps light up in the dark. Wow. Um, this happens to be one of my favorite uh, poems because it describes a scene that I used to see every single day. in the house. Uh, uh, my mother would get up early in the morning, have a bath, wear a crisp cotton sari. I never see her, saw her lounging around in a kaftan. She'd wear a crisp cotton sari. And there was a har singar ka uh, tree in her house. And she would pick up these, uh, they're also called parijat, these flowers. You know, they're orange stems and white uh, petals, very fragrant. And she would put them in a wicker basket and then the tea would be brought out. Tea was a big ceremony in our house. And then mommy would make the tea, and that was the morning they would spend together either discussing what's happening in the world, or if my mother was doing a play, then he would read out uh, her cues to her so that she could learn her lines. It was a moment between them which even the children didn't come and disturb. Nazm ka unwan hai ek lamha. زندگی نام ہے کچھ لمحوں کا اور ان میں بھی وہی ایک لمحہ جس میں دو بولتی آنکھیں چائے کی پیالی سے جب اٹھیں تو دل میں ڈوبیں ڈوب کے دل میں کہیں آج تم کچھ نہ کہو آج میں کچھ نہ کہوں بس یوں ہی بیٹھے رہیں ہاتھ میں ہاتھ لیے غم کی سوغات لیے گرمی جذبات لیے کون جانے کہ اسی لمحے میں دور پربت پہ کہیں برف پگھلنے ہی لگے اچھا اس سے پہلے کہ میں شمونتروں سے کہوں کہ یہ اس کا آپ کو ٹرانسلیشن سنائے میں بات اپنے بھائی بابا کے بارے میں کرتی ہوں مائی مادر از این ایکسٹریملی ٹاکٹیو وومن جسٹ لائک آئی ایم مائی فادر واز پرون ٹو لانگ سائلنسز تو بابا میرا جو بھائی ہے وہ کہتا ہے کہ ابا نے یہ نظم اس لیے لکھی ہے کہ یہ خواہش ہی لے کر وہ گئے کہ کبھی اپنی بیوی کے ساتھ ایسا ہو کہ آج تم کچھ نہ کہو وہ خواہش ان کی کبھی پوری نہیں ہوئی تو اس لیے انہوں نے ایک لمحہ لکھا تھا What we call life is but a moment or two In one of those moments Two eyes meet seeming to speak Looking up from a cup of tea And drown in the flux of their hearts Drowning, they say, let us not speak over much. Let us say not a word. Let us sit thus hand in hand with grief a gift and the tumult of these feelings. Who knows, but at this very moment, somewhere in the distant mountains, the snow has begun to thaw. There is an iconic poem of Kafi Sahab's called Aurat, which was written almost 70 years ago at a time when it was believed that it was for the man to go out and struggle, and it was the woman's work to stay at home, look after the kitchen and the children. 70 years ago, Kafi wrote this poem, and even today it is so 
uh, relevant. In fact, it's revolutionary and no um, discussion on CAFI can be complete without recognizing how iconic this poem is and also celebrating that there was never any dichotomy between what Kafi said and did. So when he talks about equality and he asks the woman to rise and walk shoulder to shoulder with him, that was the relationship he had with his wife, his daughter, his uh, daughter-in-law and all the women he came across. Uth meri jaan, mere saathi chalna hai tujhe. Zindagi jahed mein hai, sabr ke qabu mein nahi. nabz e hasti ka lahu kaap te aansu mein nahi. Udne khulne mein hai nikhat khame gesu mein nahi. Jannat ek aur hai jo mard ke pehlu mein nahi. Uski azad ravish par bhi ma chalna hai tujhe. Uth meri jaan, mere saathi chalna hai tujhe. Rise, my love, walk along with me. Life lies in struggle, not in endurance, not in the shimmer of tears, but in the throb of the vein. Don't hide your fragrance in temperate tresses, but let the wind carry it everywhere. There is a heaven beyond a man's embrace. Independence demands a different dance. Rise, my love, walk along with me. This is my favorite verse. Qadr ab tak teri tarikh ne jani hi nahi. Qadr ab tak teri tarikh ne jani hi nahi. Tujh mein sholay bhi hai, bas ash fishani hi nahi. Tu haqiqat bhi hai, dilchasp kahani hi nahi. Teri hasti bhi hai ek cheez, javani hi nahi. Apni tarikh ka unwan badalna hai tujhe. Uth meri jaan, mere saath hi chalna hai tujhe. The times are yet to give you your due. You are fire, not just the damp of tears. You are real, not just a charming tale. Your life outlives your youth. It is time to write your own story. Rise, my love. Walk along with me. Tord kar rasm ke but bande qadamat se nikal, zofe ishrat se nikal, vehme nazakat se nikal, نفس کے کھینچے ہوئے حلقے عظمت سے نکل قید بن جائے محبت تو محبت سے نکل راہ کا خار ہی کیا گل بھی کچلنا ہے تجھے اٹھ میری جان میرے ساتھ ہی چلنا ہے تجھے بریک دا بانز آف کسٹم اسکیپ دا بائنز آف ٹریڈیشن گیو اپ لگژری لیو اے فیٹنس بہائنڈ Break out of self-styled ideas of greatness. If love becomes a prison, break out of the prison of love. Trample on thorn and flower alike. Rise, my love. Walk along with me. These were just excerpts that we have. The poem is much longer, but we gave you some of the glimpses from it. Now, this is uh, another uh, poem of his that is very, very dear to me. It's called Makan. It talks about the plight of the construction worker who with uh, the effort put in with his blood and sweat, he makes this beautiful building. And once the building is complete, then a chokidar comes and is put at the door. And this man who has made the building with his own sweat and blood is not allowed to get into that very building. My work with the slum dwellers, which is now almost 35 years ago, actually my sensitivity towards this started with this poem of uh, Kafi's. Nazm ka unwaan hai makan. Aaj ki raat bahut karm hawa chalti hai. Aaj ki raat na footpath pe neend aayegi. Sab utho, main bhi utho. Tum bhi utho, tum bhi utho. कोई खिड़की इसी दीवार में खुल जाएगी ये जमीन तब भी निगल लेने पे आमादा थी पांव जब टूटती शाखों से उतारे हमने इन मकानों को खबर है न मकीनों को खबर उन दिनों की जो गुफाओं में गुजारे हमने हाथ ढलते गए सांचे में तो थकते कैसे 
نقش کے بعد نئے نقش نکھارے ہم نے کی یہ دیوار بلند اور بلند اور بلند بامدر اور ذرا اور سوارے ہم نے آندھیاں توڑ لیا کرتی تھی شمو کی لوے جڑ دیے اس لیے بجلی کے ستارے ہم نے بن گیا قصر تو پہرے پہ کوئی بیٹھ گیا بن گیا قصر تو پہرے پہ کوئی بیٹھ گیا سو رہے خاک پہ ہم شورش تعمیر لیے اپنی نس نس میں لیے محنت پہم کی تھکن بند آنکھوں میں اسی قصر کی تصویر لیے دن پگھلتا ہے اسی طرح سروں پر اب تک رات آنکھوں میں کھٹکتی ہے سیاہ تیر لیے آج کی رات بہت گرم ہوا چلتی ہے آج کی رات نہ فٹ پات پہ نیند آئے گی سب اٹھو میں بھی اٹھوں تم بھی اٹھو تم بھی اٹھو کوئی کھڑکی اسی دیوار میں کھل جائے گی It is a hot wind that blows tonight. Sleep will not come tonight on the footpath. Let us rise, me and you and you as well. In this bricked space, a window will surely open. Even then, the earth was bent to swallow us whole, even as we descended from the broken branches above. What would these buildings and their inhabitants know of those our days spent in caves? There can be no let in our toil, no tiring, as we build newer and better memorials, each door made strong, stronger still, and everywhere the mark of our skill. When the storm put out our lamps, we plucked electricity from the starry sky. Our work done, the palace built, the guards move in. We sleep in squalor still. The sounds of construction are our lullabies. Fatigue thrums in every vein, the palace loosened even within shut eyes. The days meld into each other, the nights are of unending dark. It is a hot wind that blows tonight. Sleep will not come tonight on the footpath. Let us rise, me and you and you as well. In this bricked space, a window will surely open. Abhe Ghazal, Mai dhoonta hoon jise wo jahan nahi milta. Mai dhoonta hoon jise wo jahan nahi milta. نئی زمین نیا آسما نہیں ملتا نئی زمین نیا آسما بھی مل جائے نئے بشر کا کہیں کچھ نشان نہیں ملتا I search for a new world that I cannot find I search for new earths, new skies I cannot find If perchance I find them, if somewhere they be I see in them no signs of a new humanity وہ تیغ مل گئی ہے جس سے ہوا ہے قتل میرا وہ تیغ مل گئی ہے جس سے ہوا ہے قتل میرا کسی کے ہاتھ کا اس پر نشان نہیں ملتا وہ میرا گاؤں ہے وہ میرے گاؤں کے چولہے وہ میرا گاؤں ہے وہ میرے گاؤں کے چولہے کہ جن میں شولے تو شولے دھواں نہیں ملتا The sword has been found that did me in but no mark of him by whom I was slain My village see there, stoves stoked with coke, stoves that have no fire now, no sign of smoke. Jo ek khuda nahi milta, to itna matam kya? Jo ek khuda nahi milta, to itna matam kya? Mujhe khud apne qadam ka nishan nahi milta. Khada hu kab se main chehron ke ek jangal mein, tumhare chehre ka kuch bhi yaha nahi milta. میں ڈھونڈتا ہوں جسے وہ جہاں نہیں ملتا نئی زمین نیا آسمان نہیں ملتا With With no God in evidence why should we mourn even the mark of my own footprint is gone I have stood long amidst this wilderness of faces but I find no trace of your face or your graces I search for a new world that I cannot find I search for new earths, new skies, I cannot find. Okay, now, Abhi Phir Johan, Director Sahab Ka Hukum Ye Tha, Ke it won't be fair to only recite uh, his poetry and not 
uh, recite one of his famous lyrics that Pyle talked about. Vakt ne kiya kya hasi satam. To uski ek kahani hai jo main aapko batana chahti hu. Asal mein hua ye ke Kaifi saab ka ye kehna hai ke film industry mein aisa hota tha ke pehle tune bandhi thi aur uske baad words likhe jate thi. So first the tune is created and then you fit the words into it. So Kaifi Saab would say this was exactly like first you find a grave and then you dig a grave and then you find a corpse that can fit into the grave. So sometimes the legs go out and sometimes the head go out. But he said, Mujhe kaam isliye milne laga kyunki log samajte te ki mein murde achche gaar leta hoon. Toh baat actually ye hai ki jab ye log likh rahe the kaagas ke phool तो एसडी बर्मन ने ये धुन बना ली एंड कैफी साहब जस्ट रोट द मुखड़ा फॉर इट एंड गुरु दैट एब्सोल्युटली लव्ड इट बट द प्रॉब्लम इज देयर वाज नो सिचुएशन फॉर दैट सॉन्ग बट गुरु दैट लव्ड इट सो मच दैट ही सेड यू मेक द सॉन्ग आई विल फाइंड द सिचुएशन एंड दैट इज हाउ यू गॉट वक्त ने किया क्या हसी सी तब आप सुना अरे मैंने पढ़ा ही नहीं देखी है ये फिल्म तो आपको पता चलेगा कि कितनी खूबसूरती से इन्होंने इसको पिक्चराइज किया था जो उन्हीं गुरुदत्त कैन डू वक्त ने किया क्या हंसी से तम तुम रहे न तुम हम रहे न हम बेकरार दिल इस तरह मिले जिस तरह कभी हम जुदा न थे तुम भी खो गए हम भी खो गए एक राह पर चल के दो कदम जाएंगे कहाँ सूझता नहीं चल पड़े मगर रास्ता नहीं क्या तलाश है कुछ पता नहीं बुन रहे हैं दिल खाब दम बदम वक्त ने किया क्या हंसी से तम तुम रहे न तुम हम रहे न हम With what sweet irony did time pass us by? You stayed not you, I stayed not I. Two restless hearts and then we met and felt we were never separate. You lost your way, I lost my way. A few steps together and we went astray. Where shall we go now, tell me where? The road we stepped out on isn't there. What are we searching for, tell me what? My heart weaves dreams still, that's all I've got. With what sweet irony did time pass us by? You stayed not you, I stayed not I. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoy the film. We'll be very happy to you, happy to talk to you after the film. There's just one thing that I must share with you. You see, my mother told me, Bete tum sab kuch karna lekin shair se shadi nahi karna. तो मैंने कहा क्यों कहते हैं वो बहुत लपटा देती है अपनी बातों में अब देखिए पोएम से आपको पता चलता है अफसोस मैंने उनकी बात नहीं मानी मे आई जस्ट फर्स से ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ द ऑडियंस वॉट अ प्रिवलेज इट इज टू हैव बीन एबल टू वॉच दिस एंड वॉट अ नेसेसरी एंड टाइमली फिल्म ऑल्सो एज यू सेड दैट He had the art of making the personal universal. May I say the same about your film? Um, as mics go around, because this is a conversation with the audience, I will use moderator's privilege to ask first just one question that that really comes out of this. He, your father grew up in, in a tiny town. What were his influences? What led him to develop the soaring imagination out of a town that we might be hard placed even to place on a map? Um, I think I say it in the film that his mother used to say he was always different. In spite of the fact that he belonged to a zamindar family, on Eid he would not wear new clothes because the farmer's children, the kisan's children would not have. Uh, so he was born, I think, uh, special and sensitive. Sui generous, as we say. Mm. And, and what for you was the revelation? Were you familiar with uh, Kefi Saab's work? No. I was shamefully unfamiliar. Uh, 
and uh, became slightly more familiar, but I'm still ashamed, even now. I should be far more familiar than I am. One of the things that I learned in, when I went to do interviews in Mijwa, which was very interesting, is somebody very old and who'd, been, who'd known Kefi Saab when he was young said, he used to be, when he was a young lad, a professional wrestler. He used to go to the Akhara every day and wrestle. And when you mention what were his influences, I think wrestling was an influence. Because I think he never stopped wrestling with words, with ideas, yeah. with social iniquity, <laughs> with filmmakers who don't know Urdu and didn't know his work. He's continuing to wrestle. But it's interesting you use a sport metaphor because if there is something that links sport and art, it is just discipline and struggle. And, and um, did, you, did you see that in your father? Did you see him struggle? Or was, did it seem to come easy or did you feel the struggle? No, it came very easily. I didn't see him struggle uh, at all, no. So there is no uh, struggling artist here? It's, it's just... No, you know, he was by nature an optimist. And it was his optimism that kept him alive, even in the darkest uh, times. So even when all around him it seemed like everything is falling apart, he would still be uh, optimistic, and that's what I got from him. Um, are there, are there, okay, there are questions. I can see um, the hands raised. I will still ask one more. You grew up in an atmosphere where in your home, you know, uh, Begum Akhtar and Ali Sardar Jafri and... and Firaq, uh, Gorakhpuri, Firaq Gorakhpuri, Josh Maliha, Badi, Faiz, Ahmed Faiz, they were all house guests. Can you what, what, what did that do to your imagination growing up? You know, what used to happen is that uh, I was about nine years old at that time and I didn't understand so much about Urdu, but I liked it very much. ये जबान जब बोलते थे सब लोग और एक धुएं से भरा हुआ एक कमरा होता था तो मैं पीछे से झांकती थी behind the curtain and my father would always tell me वहाँ से मत देखो आइए आप हमारे साथ बैठिए और वो बिठाते थे मुझे और ये शायरी होती थी और गुफ्तगु होती थी मैफिलें होती थी और उन्होंने मुझसे कहा था आप जितनी देर चाहे यहाँ बैठिए लेकिन शर्त ये है कि कल सवेरे आप स्कूल जरूर जाएंगे ये नहीं कहेंगे कि आज बहुत देर हो गई सो दैट मेड मी फील वेरी अडल्ट दैट आई गॉट दिस इन माय हेड यू नो सो आई थिंक इट वाज जस्ट ऑल दिस बाय अ प्रोसेस ऑफ ऑस्मोसिस आई थिंक इट वाज नेवर विद माय पेरेंट्स दैट दे सेट अस डाउन एंड गिव अस अ लेक्चर दे लिव्ड अ लाइफ एंड uh, my one takeaway is I'm going to go back and wall he Ranja with that meter in mind. But more specifically, but if I, if you were told that you have to choose one work of Kafi Sahib in terms of lyrics or Ghazal for posterity and only one work, which would you choose and why? Sorry. You know, it's difficult to answer that, but there are two, uh, uh, not an entire verse, sirf share hai. Aur wo share मेरी जिंदगी में बहुत माने रखते हैं तो मैं जब भी कंफ्यूजन होती है तो उससे मेरी ताकत बनती है एक तो ये है कि प्यार का जश्न नई तरह मनाना होगा प्यार का जश्न नई तरह मनाना होगा गम किसी दिल में सही गम को मिटाना होगा तो ये उनकी जिंदगी का ही मकसद ये था और एक और वो कहते थे कि कोई तो सूझ चुकाए कोई तो जिम्मा ले कोई तो सूझ चुकाए कोई तो जिम्मा ले उस इनकलाब का जो आज तक उधार सा है तो ये भी मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि ये हम सब लोगों की जिम्मेदारी है हम सब लोगों को कुछ करना चाहिए सो दीज आर माई टू फेवरेट शेयर्स ओके आई कैन सी अनदर and go up there, yeah. Yes, would you introduce yourself? Well, I can introduce, but not Would you introduce yourself? Yes, uh, uh, Gautam Nair from the, from a member of Algebra. Uh, Shivaraji, Kefi Saab was very proud of you when you were agitating for the slum workers in Bombay. How did he feel about your being in films? You know, it was quite wonderful that, uh, when I 
See, I grew up in theatre because of Ipta and things like that, but when I finally told him uh, that I want to act in the movies, uh, will you support me? So he said, I will support you in anything that you decide for yourself. Tomorrow, if you tell me that you want to become a cobbler, you want to become a mochi, then I will support that also, provided you tell yourself that I will try my best to be the best mochi in the business. So that's the kind of support I got from him. Thank you. Uh, I, just as an, is Rakshanda Jalil here? Uh, uh, just as a note for everybody, uh, as part of the centenary celebrations, there's also a wonderful new book called Kefiyat um, that Rakshanda Jalil has, has written, which is a translation of a lot of Kefi Saab's poems. The book is available at the back, and Shavana will do us the honor of signing copies if you would like to buy them. But I'd like to ask, what does the word Kefiyat capture for you? What is Kefiyat? Kefiyat ko... कैसे exactly मैं बोलूँ एहसास जो आपका एहसास है अपने अतराफ जो जस्ट करते हैं आप आप बताइए आप हैं translator आप बताइए कैफियर it is a sense of feeling an essential sort of feeling but it's feeling कैफियर is it aliveness is it is it being engaged when you say it's... My comfort is that I was very happy that so many people have seen this film and liked it. This is the comfort. Wonderful. Yes, there are questions on all sides. We'll come... Okay, there, the lady. Hi, ma'am. Uh, my name is Anika. I want to say that um, there are certain films, there's certain poetry. When you listen to that or when you watch the film, you have a lot of questions. Watching this film, my questions have disappeared. <laughs> I'm filled with love and inspiration, so thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Shumantra. We'll... Uh, I'm Seema, and uh, I also loved the film. It's very inspiring, and I would like to share it with my family members. So how can I, like, is it available anywhere? Can we buy a DVD or anything? Well, we haven't sold it yet, but we hope somebody will buy it, okay. and then many more people will hope to see it. Thank you for liking Thank you. it. Thank you. Thank you. That's encouraging. Yeah. Hello, ma'am. Uh, this is Abhay here. Um, it's a provocative question and an honest answer, therefore. Uh, your father stood for secular India. He stood for an equal India. He stood for communism, yeah? Now we see worldwide, you know, uh, with this whole shift to the right, uh, we see secularism faulting. Uh, we see communism, which stood for a certain way of production uh, falling, you know, getting replaced by capitalism, maybe just coming back. Uh, so when you see these foundations uh, eroding, uh, what, is, what is your sense of how do we restore back those principles on which humanity is found? See, I look at it in the long-term perspective. Please bet here. And uh, the fact is, because I am my father's daughter and I've inherited his optimism, uh, in spite of the seeming darkness, I feel that we will be able to come out of it because that's human nature. You cannot live in, in circumstances which are dire and hard. There will be shifts. Because people get bored of a way of being fed up, bored of a way of being bored, they don't understand it. They think, let's go, let's throw it, let's throw it. Then there is a power of people. If people understand their power and use it in a right way, then it can be difficult. But I think that the civil society has a lot of work to do in this civil society. Because you see, we depend on everything and we are just passive recipients. We should be active participants. In a democracy, we need to be active participants, changing the discourse and saying, this is what we need to put center stage. If we keep expecting that it will, the governments will do it, the governments are there, they'll come and they'll go, there are political dispensations, but there are final values, which is what makes India so beautiful. Pluralism is one of her greatest strengths her composite culture, her Ganga Jamni uh, Tehzeeb, 
these are her greatest strengths. If you look at India and you look the, at the diversity, if you look language, khana, um, mazhab, kapde, har cheez itni mukhtalif hai. There is no way ke aap is pe uniformity aap impose kar sakte hai. Ye ho hi nahi sakta. Ye Hindustan ki fitrat ke khilaf hai. That's why I call myself an optimist. Thank you. Good evening, ma'am. Sheetal from Bangalore, Algebra. Um, I wanted to know, um, your father was so poetic, your husband is so poetic. Do you have any, uh, <laughs> any of that uh, hunar in you? Have you written something? I'm always asked this question that, you know, your father was a poet, your father-in-law was a poet, your husband is a poet. Do you write poetry? So I say, no, I provide the inspiration. <laughs> Just a continuation of, poetry. just a continuation of that. Are there any poets in this day and age, in this era, writing Hindi, Urdu, English poetry that inspire you, even remotely close to what your fathers did? No, father, but not just father, but Fez, Jafri, Majru, yes. Janisar Akhtar, Sahir, the whole lot of them, that entire uh, movement, or. Uh, <laughs> Did, uh, who were the poets that your father read? Who were the poets that your father read? Did he read poetry? Did your father read poetry as well? Oh, yes, of course. So who he did he read? Well, he read everybody. He read all the Urdu poets and used to like Pablo Neruda uh, very much. I think they also met uh, once or twice. But he would read a lot of uh, Russian poets. He would lead, read... I think he knew every single Urdu poet and he knew their poetry by heart. You know, whether it was Iqbal, oh, Ghalib was his most favorite, obviously. Yeah. Hi, Rahul. Uh, I wanted to ask that, uh, you know, when I read some of uh, Kafi Saab's work, like Dusra Banwas, Aurat, I feel that they are so relevant. So, since we are in the centenary year of uh, Kafi Saab, do you, th I mean, do you think anything can be done to make his work more uh, popular among the youth because I'm not sure if everybody has read about him even in the room I don't know how many would have you know uh, some of these are very moving I'm personally I you know get very inspired about certain things so do you think anything you can do I mean uh, which you know through his work that it you know the young people also get to know because it's very important you see one of the things we realized that we needed to do was to translate the uh, poetry in many languages. So this year itself, we've got three books coming out. One is Rakshinda Jalil's, one is the one that uh, Shamantra has also done, edited by Sudeep Sen, where he's also um, translated a lot of the poems called Kafi Nama, and a new book that is going to come up that has Janisar Akhtar and Kafi Azmi, their poetry. Some of the poems are also translated by Budu here. Then we have this film, Speak Make has, uh, been telling us for a long time that the work that they do, they go to schools and they go to colleges, so they want to take a uh, film around. This year we've done many, many things, but you are young, you tell us how to do it in a way that you people will be uh, interested. But what I find interesting, Rahul, is when I go to Rekhta, I feel very, very happy because I see that in such a short time, it has become such a big thing and it's peopled with young uh, people. Urdu se, zaban se, koi bhi zaban se, lagao hona zaruri. Aaj ke din mein where you no longer care for grammar, you do not care for spelling, you don't care for pronunciation, everything is brevity. Jaldi, 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 WhatsApp mein jo aapki language hoti, why o, you ko aap you karte hain. तो इससे मुझे बहुत तकलीफ होती है क्योंकि मुझे लगता है कि आपकी जो जड़ें हैं वो आपकी ज़बान में हैं और वो किसी तरह से हम अगर अपने बच्चों को सिखा सकें तो अच्छा होगा। I think maybe a final question. Is there a final question? Okay, I see a hand there. Uma, please. Hi, this is just small. My name is Uma. Just a small thing to contradict what you say. You know, Shabana, you met Ma, my mother about 20 years ago, and she said the same thing to you. Your father's a poet, your um, 
husband's a poet, but you are poetry. Oh, you remember? That's where I pinched it from. Thank <laughs> That's you. Where you pinched it up. Okay, I would like to ask Shivantra Ghoshal a question since you all are not asking him. You are famous as Dr. No. Anything that is offered to you, you say no. That is your <laughs> reaction. That is what we call him, Dr. No. Why did you accept to make this film when I asked you to? Apart from my extreme charm. Difficult to answer. I think I, think I, was, I had started working on a film 20 years ago on the progressives. Uh, I quickly realized uh, my foolishness and reverted to being Dr. No and gave up that project. But I had the interviews with Kefi Saab and with his wife that you actually see in the film. Those are interviews I did 20 years ago before Shabana discovered she had charm. <laughs> but it was partly because I had gone through that process that I knew that this is a journey I had to take. And I also knew that Shabana did wonderful lunches. <laughs> and it was a way of meeting Javed as well, and that is something you should never give up. So I think all of these things, but also just the idea of, of a language that I love, which I cannot speak, um, but which I do love hugely, and a period and a time that I thought encapsulated in, in a short time, idealism and the falling away of idealism. Because I think many of those things began to escape the people who um, held on to them so vigorously. And so many things changed that I thought there was conflict. There was, uh, there was a wonderful story there. So all these things. Uh, but I do have a follow-up question. You said you you didn't know the language. Or you don't know. You just translated. He's just being very modest. Don't because you've just translated. No. How how you translated the poetry? Or somebody else did it, and you've just given your name. As somebody in your family said, luck by chance. Ah, bilkul luck by chance. So. Are there questions? Then a final question. You know, of the range of concerns that seem to occupy your father's imagination, you know, from gender to, to caste, identity, is there one that always struck you as being his dominant concern? Insan dosti. I think that was it, you know. Uh, that was the basic thing, and then from that, of course, all the other uh, concerns came out. But please, I hope you don't go away only thinking about Kefi. You also think about Shokat, because she is quite an amazing, amazing person. And in there this, is no question just, that comes. She's just absolutely gorgeous, really lovely. Um, I, I think you say somewhere that during the time that she started to then act, he, he just took over the role of, of what is considered a mother's role. And he said that we have to, we are her family, we have to enable her to do her craft. Will you tell us a little about that? You know time? what had happened once, uh, she was doing a play called Pagli, and uh, she had only 10 or 15 days to uh, rehearse for it, and it was uh, uh, in the Maharashtra State competition. So my mother has this very strange way of just rattling her lines. You know, she just learns her lines and she keeps saying them, and then she'll speak them in the middle of whatever. So one day, she was cooking, she was in the kitchen, and suddenly she started speaking these lines. Utho pir gire wo gbam ke gole, something. So the cook ran out saying, Begum sab pagal ho hai. I went crying to my father, and I said, Mommy has become mad, and the cook has run away, and she was saying some strange lines and all that. And he was writing, okay, I was about nine at that time. He put his pen down, and he said, uh, okay, come, let's just go for a walk. And we went for a walk to the beach. And he said, Betty, she's not become mad. She has this goal. It's like an exam. She has to give an exam. And 15 days uh, later, she has to do the play. She's got such little time for it. So you shouldn't get ashamed of it. You shouldn't feel bad. You should feel very proud of her. And in fact, you should help her 
learn her lines like I do, because that will give her more confidence. Fifteen days later, when she won the Best Actress Award, I was convinced it was my support that had uh, done will you, it. Will you give us two lines of any verse that to you exemplify not your father but your mother? This is very difficult. Shaguftagi ka latafat ka shahakar ho tum, fakat bahar hi nahi, hasli bahar ho tum. On that note, um, Kefiat, the book is available. Kefi Nama, the film we hope will be more universally available. Thank you very much, Shamantra. Thank you, Shabana ji. Please continue the conversations. You will do us the honor of signing the book for Thank those you. who would wish it. The bar is open. Let's Thank continue you. the conversations. Thank Shukriya. you for being a wonderful audience. Shukriya.